blockchain basics and today's topic smart contracts let's talk about what are smart contracts how are they used are there real life applications why are smart contracts useful why are smart contracts unfavorable and when can smart contracts be used and what is a ERC20 token so if you hear the word smart contracts you might think of a paper contract and how this can be smart but a smart contract is neither of those things it's neither a contract nor is it smart so it all started when the ethereum founder Vitalik realized that blockchain can be used for more than simply transactions because the bitcoin blockchain can only send currency back and forth but he invented his ethereum ledger where you can apply distributed applications which he called dapps so distributed applications and on it smart contracts which are a digital protocol used to verify a performance or enforce something so you can imagine it's like with an excel and if clause so if something happens then something else will be executed or will be done so smart contracts are also not an invention by him it's also been around before Nick Szabo, a computer scientist and law scholar, wrote already about it in 1997. So that's not new. So let me explain you the difference between a normal contract and a smart contract. So in a normal world, we have a paper contract, um, which is verified by a lawyer or a notary. And you agree for some service or a payment. And for those payments, you have a request. So you send, they send the request when you use the service or when you have to make a payment. And then you either authorize it or you reject it. So if that happens in the real world, the usual case is you use something, you pay for it. But if people don't want to pay for it, so if one party violates the contract, there have to be legal actions. You have to go in front of a court or involve a lawyer to enforce what the contract actually says. So with smart contracts, that's not the case because they're automated. It means that something is written in that computer program. And if the request comes in, it's either authorized or rejected by the smart contract. So both parties don't have to do anything. Someone used the service and then they have to pay for it and the smart contract will enforce it. There is no other way around it. That comes in really handy. So in Ethereum, smart contracts are programs and they're no, not real or not really smart. They're just useful and handy. Um, because the execution is autonomous. The code has to run in every node though, and the Ethereum programming language is called Solidity. So if you can't read Solidity or you don't know how it works, well then you can't read your contract or you can't read the computer program that you're agreeing to and that you have to pay for. The code is triggered or executed automatically through either a transaction or something inside the protocol. Um, there are some running costs, which are called gas, which is like tiny, tiny um, transactions you have to make, but that's not very big or is not a big issue. So Ethereum dApps are blockchain-based apps. We had this before, decentralized applications. And the smart contracts are run in the background and the VAP or application is in the front end. So you don't actually see your smart contract in the back. You can do normal stuff like you do in your apps on your phone, and then something in the background might be triggered. Since the smart contract is a computer program, it's just some computing language you don't really have to read or understand. So how does the execution of a smart contract work? So imagine you have a predefined contract or conditions 
um, for example, with an insurance company. So you insure your house and you pay every month in that smart contract, the insurance company, your money for the insurance. But in the event of, like if it, something happens in an event, that contract gets triggered and then executes the value transfer, which means that then the insurance company has to send the money back. And this should be all automated and no one should be involved. Another example would be an SLA life cycle, which means a several level agreement. So it wouldn't be a whole event that is happening, but for example, it's a commitment two parties have. For example, an internet provider. So in most internet contracts, there is a certain ambits per second that have to be delivered. And if that rate drops, for example, example 30% of the time, um, a penalty has to be enforced. So you negotiate your SLA with the company, then you deploy it, and then something needs to monitor it. Because during the month, who is checking if the internet value is there and who believes who? So we call that an oracle, which is something outside the blockchain, which monitors something and feeds the data back in. So that oracle will check your Mbit rate the whole month, and then at the end of the month, all the data would be in the blockchain and it would be checked if it was okay or if not. And if not, then the penalty would be enforced and the internet provider would have to pay. That contract would run as long as you, they are agreed to or until there's a termination. So as long as you don't finish your contract with the internet company, that SLA would stay in place. So why are smart contracts useful? Well, we had this before, they're autonomous, so you don't have legal enforcement. That's very useful. But they're also encrypted, which means that the documents on a shared ledger are encrypted and other parties can't see them. It's also mutable, which we learned in another video. Blockchains are unchangeable, which means also the smart contracts are unchangeable. No one can go in and change the rules in the smart contract or in the computer program. They're distributed, which means they are backed up on other nodes. Since every node runs all the smart contracts, if your computer breaks down and you join the Ethereum network again, all the other ones still store the information and you can get it back up. They're economical efficient because there's no intermediary needed. So you don't need a lawyer or someone else to enforce the contract, they're automatically enforced but you can also agree to them. So if you understand the smart contract and you agree to the rules, you can just pay into it or buy it and you don't need anyone else. They're also accurate. So they're not, they're avoiding errors of commission or omission, which means human interference. So humans do mistakes, not on purpose, but smart contracts won't because they're computer programs. Also, they're open source. There's speci there are special pools for creating smart contracts and templates. So for example, on EtherParty, BlockCat, MyWish, or Token Factory, there are pre-made contracts that you can just download. Why are smart contracts unfavorable? Well, they're very time consuming. So if they have a bug, you need to find that bug in that protocol or in that computer program. And if they're already on the blockchain, you can't change them, which means you have to make a new version and upload it to the blockchain. They can't access outside information, which means they need oracles to feed in some sort of information, which also makes them vulnerable because the oracle comes from outside and people are not sure where the oracle is coming from or if the oracle is feeding proper data and how we can be sure that the data is not manipulated. It can't enforce any payments without prior deposit, which means if the smart contract is empty, you can't do much with it. So also there's no change after deployment. So if the smart contract is already in place between the two parties, you can't change anything afterwards. You ha would have to set up a whole new contract between the two. 
Um, complex computation will need high gas costs for the smart contracts. Since they're running on each node, the cost would then be higher. Also, they're not interoperable with each other, so smart contracts can't talk to each other or work with each other. You have to make a smart contract for each single thing. And they're open source programs, which means if you don't really trust the person who wrote it, you have an issue because the person who wrote the smart contract knows best how it's done and what is inserted in it. And if you don't understand, like I said, the language solidity, which the Ethereum smart contracts are written in, it's like you're signing a contract in a different language. You're simply agreeing to something that you don't know anything about. There are some examples of application that are already out there. So for example, we have something similar to Kickstarter, which are DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, where you can invest in startups. And as soon as the startup starts doing some certain things, some conditions, and they're fulfilling it, the amount of money collected in the DAO will be sent to them. That's called wings.ai. We have another application for shipping or mail, which is a payment on delivery system uh, used for maritime logistic industries is done by Mertsk. And for example, insurance, we have processing claims already. American International Group are doing that. Um, we have an example for voting. So voter registration is being facilitated via a blockchain in Switzerland, which is called Uport. And then for example, land registry, where the properties are stored on the blockchain. So those are just random examples I, show, I chose that are in place that you can have a look at, but there's so many more examples you can see. Um, the list is unlimited. So when do I know how to use a smart contract? Well, when the conditions of it can be either digitalized or when you try to cut out the middleman. So if there's a third person, an intermediary, you can cut it out using a smart contract or try to replace it. It's not always the case, but you can analyze and see if it can work. So the future of smart contracts could be that cars, for example, that needs to be charged, drive themselves to a, or get driven to a gas station and then charge. And then the car pays the gas station without someone else interfering. So they have a smart contract when they plug in their um, socket to get more electricity, they automatically agree to the smart contract and then the payment is enforced. That is also called machine to machine payments and is also an issue with micropayments that are currently our fa uh, blockchain is facing. Since we had that with the TPS, with the transactions per second, it can be difficult to have all these transactions on the network. So let's talk really quickly about ERC-20 token. It's just a standard made by the Ethereum community. So the ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Comments and the 20 is just a number. Nowadays, there's already a new standard in place, but this is just a standard created by the Ethereum community for tokens used in smart contracts. So no one can make false tokens or use them for something else. Since we had a couple of issues in the past with ICOs and scams, they put this standard in place to prevent that happening. And since tokens are used in smart contracts, it's very important to have some standards in place. So let's sum this up. Smart contract means a program on a blockchain executing something. There is no middleman needed to execute that. And Ethereum was the first blockchain to deploy smart contracts as dApps, decentralized applications. There are pros and cons for smart contracts and when to use them is always up to the user. 
The future of smart contracts could be machine to machine payments, but there are of course so many other applications. Just have a look out there. And then there is the ERC20 standard created by the Ethereum community to prevent fraud and enhance interoperability. Just have a look at it. Thank you very much.